Cool. <laughs> right on. Thank you. We've got a couple minutes. They're going to answer uh, questions you may have. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. I noticed the ammo switching that it pauses yeah. when you're doing it. Is that going to be in the, game, the yeah. final game? Yeah, what we wanted, we really wanted to encourage the chemistry of the live ammo types and the different types of play. And we tried a number of different schemes, but the one that really encouraged people was the one where they didn't have to remember anything, and they could get right in the thick of it and go, ah, and just hit the D-pad, which is where the ammo select is, and then it freezes, and it freezes everything in the action. And then you can choose and go, well, what do I want to, I'm going to do this, this, and as soon as you get back, you're right back in the action, but now you've, you're armed with what you want. So we really wanted to encourage that chemistry, as well as the first to third person. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of different ammo. I mean, did you give out a number? Well, there's eight primary types that are used to shoot with, and then they each get upgraded in different ways. So they build. But each one has a different effect on the enemies. So some are immobilized, some are totally stealth, some are aggressive. Yes? Uh, is there any reason you didn't uh, make a GameCube version? Uh, probably just, uh, uh, you know, the truth is we, we didn't consider it much. We didn't. We didn't, uh, this is a pretty expensive game, and it's going to cost, you know, we're doing a PS2 conversion now, and the cost is pretty high, and, you know, the uh, installed base isn't what we'd hope it would be on that system, so decided not to go that direction. What are some of the trade-offs uh, when moving to PS2 with this? Obviously, this looks great. Probably great. Well, hopefully as few as possible. Mm -hmm. But we're working with a couple of outside houses to uh, do as great a job as we can. Uh, you know, we had a lot of fans on the Sony base originally, and uh, we want to, you know, get them back to the Oddworld brand and give them something new and special. So we're putting a lot of time and energy into that PS2 version and try and bring it up as tight as possible. It's really great. It's working with EA. EA is, you know, playing a big hand in that as well. They've got a hell of an expertise on the system, more than we do, certainly. So Online. That's good. No online components. In this game, we just wanted to see, it, you know, not to be too ambitious, but we wanted to break some new ground. We wanted to break some new ground in melding third-person action with first-person shooting. We wanted to make those happen synergistically at any time, available to the user, and stealth versus combat, and the whole concept of live ammo. If we could achieve that well in this one title with, and this title's got a pretty vast epic story that really builds up in a, far more successfully than any of our previous stories. If we achieved that, that was enough for the first game. Then, from that chemistry, first to third person, we would, we would then go multiplayer. And so that's the intent. So if you guys like it and uh, it goes over well, then you know, that's where we'll be going with it. And we actually had multiplayer running at the very beginning of production. It was really cool to see what happens when, in first person, you're bound at about 15 miles per hour max, which is pretty much like halo speed, first person. In third person, you can go 55 miles per hour max. And at different stages of the game, you can go faster and faster and faster, depending on different upgrades you get. That offers a whole different strategy of play because your retreat ability now is not there in normal POV shooters. You don't have the ability to just say, you know what, the action's getting too hot for me right now. I'm hightailing it out of here. I'm going to go get some higher ground. I'm going to lay some traps. I'm going to run, get out of the thick of it, lay some traps, and let, wait for them to follow me. So it enhances the strategy of what we're used to in multiplayer, but can take it further. But that'll be another title. Yes. What kind of um, game would you describe it as? I mean, it's got first person, it's got third person, it's got some puzzle exploration. Like, how would you describe it? A next generation game. <laughs> you know, action. Action, it's more like, we typically say action adventure, which is uh, getting more blurry. But what we wanted was more epic feeling action that had more entertainment value, meaning, Game engines, to a large degree, are, are challenge reward delivery systems. But they're not necessarily giving us laughs like a movie gives us laughs, or you know, getting us connected to characters in the same way in play. And so we've been trying to make a game engine that's also more of an entertainment delivery system, as well as a challenge and reward delivery system. And so, because what we ultimately see is that that line between games and movies should be con continually being blurred more and more, and that's the path that we're, we're on, is, is trying to accomplish that better. You had a question earlier. Um, I already know the answer, but anyway. Ah. Um, this is not published by the same publisher that published in the last game. Would you comment on that? Yeah. Or? Well, Microsoft was a great publisher, you know, and they were a great partner. But uh, I think ultimately the direction that 
Microsoft, the Xbox market, uh, and the Oddworld brand were not necessarily synergizing perfectly. And uh, I think it was an amicable split, and we wanted to be on multi-platforms as well. So EA uh, has been a great partner so far as well. I love the uh, Western Australian Outback theme. Does that hold up to the entire story? or is it, it starts to change. So you're going to start to encounter much more industrialism as well. So we liked the theme of Outlaws and Western. It gave a nice aesthetic that we could work with that we felt like wasn't really, really done well yet in games. And this is, you know, two years ago when we were thinking about the title. I haven't seen Red uh, Dead Hand. What's Revolver. Uh, yeah, and, but that's selling well. I haven't seen it yet. But we felt like it's a great landscape to start a game on. And so it evolves that way, but there's a lot of plot twists in the game, and the, and the plots thicken, and it takes you into a deeper realm. You seem to be a, a big fan of the Sergio Leone westerns. Yeah, huge, huge. Are there any specific nods to the movies or any lines from the movies? <laughs> Not specifically, not specifically, because we really wanted it more as a sort of aesthetic influence rather than a, an homage, you know. And if someone's uh, really expecting just a Western, it's not what this game is. It's a lot more than that, but it laid a nice, a nice groundwork, a nice place for the game to launch from. There's no metal hidden under the pants whatever. <laughs> but you do get some armor and stuff, so. But there's a lot of twists, like I said. It, it, it doesn't end like you would expect it to. Any other questions? Yeah. Me, you could quickly comment on sort of the technology. I noticed uh, yeah. um, it's a very, very beautiful game. Um, Thank just you. Just real quick, how long, uh, maybe the edge to develop and what you think you've accomplished with it. Yeah. And also the sound, like, it's awesome. How much are, oh, thank are you, you paying for that? A lot. So we wanted to, uh, you know, when we set out on the title, one of the things in the beginning was really push the Xbox. And that was one of the that was one of the objectives, and uh, graphically, you know, we've done a lot in that direction. We want and we wanted more scale, meaning normal mapping. There's some normal mapping going on in the game, and that's a very popular buzzword today. But we were more concerned with I want two dozen characters that you're confronting at a time. We want more vast landscapes that you're actually you go wow all that way I can go there I can play there I can actually interact with that guy right now and we were looking for that sense of scale versus more rendering tricks in a small room you know and uh, so that's how it started and in aiming for that aesthetic we go well we've always been after trying to do real-time foley so it's really scoring itself as well and if you notice as the AI is changing the soundtrack is changing and that's dynamically happening through the whole game. So what, ultimately, if we do our job well, and I'm not sure how close we are to really doing our job well yet, but ultimately, it should just be like a movie score that is timed to your action, and that it's constantly changing based on what you've ha made happen in the world. And that's a little complicated, but we've covered some ground in there, and, and certainly other games are heading that direction as well. Yeah. Well, if that's it, I appreciate you all coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.